Are we sure this is right? I'm not seeing anything weird. I have no doubt. This place gives me the same sensation as when I touch the birdcage. I think this is what would bring me back here. I suppose so. Even though it's only been about half a year. Still, I had no idea Alice Hiragi graduated from Shujin. I didn't either. And I figured a student council president would know better than anyone about celebrity graduates. Perhaps she had a past here that she wished to erase. What do you mean? Those voices we heard in her jail. Those cutting words and that painful cry. I don't know whether she was one of the instigators or the victim of such bullying. However, she experienced it. Left such a gaping wound in her heart that she refuses to even acknowledge the truth of the matter. And that truth took place right here. So that's why Shujin has a secret room. <sighs> well, we should get moving. What's next? We may not be in Shibuya, but this place is still linked to its jail. Inputting the proper Emma keyword should permit access as usual. Okay, let's try it. Everybody ready? Yeah, we're ready. Keyword, Wonderland. Keyword successfully entered. Beginning navigation. So, it's a classroom? Is this what a school is like? It's rather different than how the internet makes it appear. The cognitive distortion's really strong here. What's going on? Uh, hey, look! Ah, the ghost! Are you seriously crying? Ugh, how pathetic. Trying to get us to go easy on you. You tricked him the same way too, didn't you? No, I... I'd never do that. What? What is this? God, you're disgusting. Serious? Why are you still alive? <sighs> do us a favor. And die already. Also changed. As these prison cells. No time. Here it comes. Look sharp, folks. We should avoid wasting energy on our attacks. Let's read the enemy's movements and respond in time. Yeah! 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 
That rumbling. The birdcage in the jail is now unlocked. We will be able to access it. For real? It appears our most recent target held the key. In other words, we defeated the warden guarding the key. A warden in Alice's memories. A key to the cage in her jail. So a different shadow held the key, not Alice's? What are you going on about? Uh, oh, nothing. I was just thinking how many differences there are from the palaces. Good point. The palaces don't have any rooms like these, or wardens guarding keys in hidden locations. It's as if the more we learn, the messier the situation gets. If it weren't for Sophie, we wouldn't have even made it here. Have I been helpful to the Phantom Thieves? Mm-hmm. You know it. Praise accepted. Mm. Well, we'll praise you all you want later got a birdcage to bust open. True. We have one last task in the real world first. Let's send Alice the calling card and take back those desires. Okay, all that's left is send in the calling card. What should it say? We're after the desires that Alice is seizing from the people whose hearts she changed, right? Then don't we have to write something like, We shall take back the desires you've seized! Smart. Using the same logic that works on treasures is probably our best shot. Once the desire takes form, we can steal it. If we return the victims their own desires, everyone should return to normal. So, what'll happen to Alice then? Well, she should be having a change of heart and confessing soon after. Actually, that's not set in stone. What we're stealing this time are the desires that Alice seized from others. This isn't her own desire or ambition. Or like the treasure we found in palaces. There's no way of knowing whether or not Alice's heart will be changed. Even if we rescue her victims, without a change of heart in Alice, 
This will just turn into a pointless cycle. But if the calling card works, her desire will manifest inside the birdcage. That creates a high probability that we'll encounter Alice's shadow there. We did cause quite a scene destroying the lock. Whether through words or fists, don't we still have the opportunity to change her heart via her shadow? Then let's do it! Let's take her head on! Oh, uh, sorry. I know that's the dangerous approach, but... If you guys are all up for it, I want to rescue Alice too. Not just her victims. Alice said she wanted to be a ray of light that could inspire people suffering through life. You mean when she was on TV? I don't know if she really meant all that. Well, I do. I get why she said it. Because of all the bullying in her past. I mean, doesn't it seem like we saw part of Alice's trauma in the secret room? Trauma? It's like an invisible wound in a person's heart. It comes from living through painful experiences. A wound in a heart. Maybe that trauma's the whole reason the jail formed. Trauma distorted Alice's heart, giving birth to the jail. That is very similar to Palace Generation. I've got to say it's possible. But how is that trauma relevant to Alice's current behavior? This is just a hunch, but I think she sees what she's doing as some kind of revenge against the kinds of girls who treated her badly. Stealing someone's dude right in front of her as revenge to Alice? Oh, that's pretty sick. But her shadow's operation is way too massive for that to be all. She just has too many victims already. What if she simply kept escalating because no one was there to stop her? Becoming a monarch must create an awful amount of distortion. All that only makes me want to help Alice more. If her heart's grown that distorted, then I want her to at least remember how it feels being a ray of light for somebody. Is she beyond helping at this point? I don't know. But there has to be someone who at least tries. We can't just abandon Alice. Oh, Lady On. Don't speak too soon. I'm really gonna lay into her for all this. I'm with you. Let's do it. No objections here either. However, should we engage her in combat, we must avoid taking her life at all costs. Absolutely. That's out of the question. Best case scenario, just talk her out of it. Guys, do you think I could write the calling card this time? There's something I need to tell her personally. You know it! This is gonna be our best one so far. Writing a calling card? Need any help? Ooh, you can help me with the phrasing, Sophia. Awesome. All we gotta figure out now is the delivery. <laughs> I may have a plan for that. This is a special reunion of the Phantom Thieves. We gotta do this right. In other news, Akira Konoe, founder of Medis, announced a joint project with one-time rival company, Pineapple. Tech heads are fired up with anticipation at the news, awaiting further details with... Hey, look. Huh? Okay, folks, listen up! Good evening. Been a while, huh? Perhaps you remember us. We are the Phantom Thieves. And we're back in action with a new heart in our sights. A wicked witch who treats people like toys. Alice Hiragi. You pretend you're a ray of light, but all you do is hurt people to indulge your own darkness. You're a bad person, and bad people have to be stopped. And all those desires you stole. Tonight, we're taking them all back. Oh, it's the manager. Hello! Oh, 
This is madness, Alice. Look at the email I forwarded you. What in the... Phantom Thieves? Taking my desire? All the desires I've collected? No, you can't! I need those! That's what makes me the monarch! I need those to... Without those, I'll... Alright. I'll wait for you. I don't want toys that don't do as they're told. I'll smash you for certain this time. Great shot to the birdcage of desire. procedures wouldn't work. All right, Skull. Get to home. Uh, no. Look at the size of that thing. Uh, what do we do now? Uh, how do you steal something like that? I admit, I don't know either. What's that? It's her! Alice. So, it's a fight after all. Those desires. Hey, you! Joker, right? Did you come back to me so you could be mine? Oh, what a grown! You should try being nicer to girls. Alice Hiragi! We know all about the horrible things you've done. You seized people's desires by force and turned them into your puppets. You toyed with people's emotions and made them mistreat one another. You even opened up stores so you could bilk all the people you brainwashed. We can no longer overlook the wicked changes of heart you forced on the people. The Phantom Thieves are about to beat the distortion out of you. Takamaki-san, you're so beautiful. There's no way you could understand. You have no clue what I've been through. You mean what happened to you at Shujin? Oh. Where did... How? We know all of it. How you were bullied. How it was torture for you. But I still... Oh, okay. You found out. No matter how much I hide it, the past still comes back to me. How pathetic. What a mess. That doesn't matter now. With this power, I can have everything. Everything I've always wanted. Mine! And now, I'm gonna make you mine! All mine! Thank <laughs> you. 
This really is Alice in Wonderland. Oh my! I'm late for a very important date! Come along, come along! I have such wonders to show you! What wonders? Ignore her, Sophie. She just wants to torture us. Alice, I'm gonna make you see the light!
tired of being like this. I was finally able to find some happiness. Are you here to take everything I have? Just like she did? Just try me. So sick of suffering! Something's changed! Stay on guard! Whoa, holy shit! Why is she so fast now?
use this. Thanks. Huh. Come. With this. Thanks. It's powerful. Go ahead. Strong against psychokinesis. It's out of mind. going, you'll just make yourself feel even worse. How would you know? I just can't compare to someone like you, Takamaki-san. All my life, I'm no match for the real winners. And I tried so hard to change, but I was still made fun of, still bullied. I just wanted to stop being miserable. I poured my heart into fashion and worked to get so far. But then, she showed up again and started running her mouth about my past. She told everyone what a pathetic little shit I was. <sighs> That's why I took all of it from her. Her boyfriend, her social circle, everything. And that still wasn't enough for me. It wasn't just her. Everyone that talked behind my back, all the people who just stood there when I was kidding. I'll destroy every single one of them. Alice. So this is a wound in a heart. <laughs> this power lets me get revenge. So I... You became the bully, right? You idiot. What good does that do? Now you're just as bad as the people who made you suffer. Is that how you want to live? Like one of those bullies? Didn't you want to be something else? A ray of light for others. And for yourself. <sighs> Don't give up because of those selfish bastards! Uh, Takamaki-san. You're right. I wanted to rescue them. All the people like me, going through the same thing. But I... You think so? I... I want 
to apologize to the people I hurt and start over. Mm hmm I'm sure you can turn it around. I've been through a lot of the same things, but thanks to my best friend and the Phantom Thieves, I was able to stand up for myself and do the right thing. You're never alone. Once you're back to your real self, let's be friends, okay? You want to be... Really? Uh-huh. I mean, I totally love Alice. <laughs> we even share the same dream. <sighs> Thank you. <sighs> I'll go back now. Where I belong. But this time, I'm gonna be... Was effing amazing! Did we just witness the desires returning to their rightful owners? Yeah, that's what it looked like to me. Everyone who got a desire disappeared afterward. I hope that means their real life counterparts are returning to normal. Yes, you're right. Wait, what the? What is it, Monachan? Something's wrong. It's not collapsing, but the giant desire blew up, like... No, just look around. Now that you mention it... Whenever we stole a treasure, we'd have to leave the metaverse entirely, right? Yeah, we always had to haul ass out of there. That is most assuredly not happening now. If anything, it's grown eerily quiet. So if the monarch is toppled and the desires are all returned, the jail still doesn't collapse? It would appear that palaces are different from this jail, after all. There's a chance we haven't actually resolved the issue yet. I wonder how Alice will react to this. Could we find out when we get back to the real world? It'd be nice if she could recall what happened here, but no one shares memories with their shadows. Think she might talk to Panther? Huh? Me? Yeah, yeah! You two could really hit it off! She did say that she loves her. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was worth going that far for her to come to her senses. <laughs> Alice really is a one-of-a-kind talent. And her dream is definitely something worth fighting for. I just hope she can remember how that dream first made her feel. So she can bring that feeling to the people who need it. I don't know if there's anything I can do to help her. But, I at least want to be there for her. Fascinating. What's up, Sophie? Just as the Phantom Thieves predicted, Alice Hiragi appeared to change her logic. This would not be possible had we simply defeated her. How did you predict the outcome? We didn't really predict it. Being able to change is what makes someone human. Someone is human... because they can change. The human heart is much more complicated than expected, isn't it? Just when you think you've grown beyond your pain, the smallest thing can bring you all the way back down again. The human heart is indeed difficult to comprehend. It's filled with mysteries. Well, you're pretty high up there on the mystery charts yourself, Sophie, my dear. No, I'm... Sophie, humanity's companion, right? We get it. You got it, Skull. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not bad, Skull. Do you really get it? <laughs> well, 
what do you say we head back now? I'd like to check on the real world, Alice. Yeah, <laughs> let's get going. Shadow Alice earlier. By the end, though, she appeared happy. Why is that? Wasn't she angry at Alice? Okay. Anger is not just for hurting people. It is also able to save people. If someone is in the wrong, anger can be used to show them the error of their ways. The human heart is such a mystery. But thanks to you, I've gained valuable experience. Thank you. I hope to learn more from you. And now for the hottest meet and greet. Alice Hiragi has returned as our special guest. Miss Alice, thank you so much for coming on today, despite the last visit's conclusion. From what I hear, there's something you wish to share? Yes, I need to confess something. The incident that occurred with the previous hosts, that was all my fault. I forced him to proclaim his love for me during a live broadcast. When I heard he was engaged to his co-host, I just wanted to ruin their relationship. <laughs> Miss Alice. And they're not the only ones. Anytime I see a happy woman, I just get so jealous. I do whatever it takes to ruin their lives. Uh, <laughs> is this... is this a prank or something? All of my past managers tried so hard to stop me. But then I'd lash out at them too, and... And I'd assault them until they back down. The only reason I've changed managers is because my last one had a total breakdown. Wait, are you... is this real? Everything I've said here is the truth. I'm sure all of it is easy enough to prove now. I've lied and I've... It hurt so many people. And I'm just so sorry for it all. Is this... the Phantom Thieves? I'm the one who did it all. No one but me did these horrible things. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Cut! Cut! Right now! Dump the standby! All right, we're on the hunt for a Gatorade coffee. First, let's find out how many are in the area. Gatorade coffee. Got it. There's only one that's close to Sendai Station. Whoa, that was fast. It's a bit of a walk, but I'll be happy to guide you to the destination. You're amazing, Sophia. It's like you were made to be a navigator. Ugh, but being the navigator's my job. It's simply a question of having the right person for the right job. Fear not, Futaba. There are plenty of things only you can do. Huh, I guess that's true. Nobody else can act like a weirdo quite like you do, Inari. Who are you calling a weirdo? All right, I guess we'll just head over to the cafe then, yeah? Yeah, let's get going. Okay, I got it. This is it. Gatori coffee. I can smell the coffee. It seems to be just an ordinary cafe. Are we sure we have the right place? We'll just have to put in the keyword and see. All right, let's make it happen. The trauma cell's calling our names. Trauma cell? It's just a name I came up with. Trauma room sounds like some kind of cheesy hospital drama. Call it whatever you want. You gotta roll. The key to opening that birdcage has gotta be here somewhere. Do you remember the keyword? Of course. 
It's Prince of Nightmares. It's just like what happened in Shibuya. This is where Natsume's trauma comes from. What could have happened to him, I wonder? Shh. Someone's up ahead. Um, are you sure about this? Awarding him the grand prize for that? Ongo Natsume. <laughs> the kid's entered every contest, but he's never made it past the first stage. He's as stubborn as he is incompetent. What's more, his writing is so painfully generic, it only becomes more obvious when you compare it to the other candidates. <laughs> what? Voice. Is it not Sume? It can't be. He acknowledged my work. It's fine. He's the great Sogo Natsume's grandson, remember? Brand recognition is a huge part of marketability. Nobody gives a rat's ass about what's beyond the cover. Though a certain someone seems to think he's actually worth a damn. Poor oh, kid can't even see just how hopeless he really is. <laughs> Seriously, he's not <laughs> Oh, I'm trying as hard as I can. No skin off my nose, so long as he keeps raking it in. We hit the jackpot with that one, and I plan on riding him straight to the top. And if he does, by some miracle, make something decent of himself, well, then everyone wins, right? <laughs> These guys are the worst. Here it comes. Right on. A Talipus hack like you was hopeless. Hopeless! Hopeless! This is the same thing we saw in Shibuya. Careful! It's using different weapons from last time! Fly! Let me in! Can't eat your mind! Oh shit! This attack is crazy fast! On the other hand, it leaves him wide open! Dodge the attack, then hit him with everything you've got! You you know I said I would do this for the money. Oh, yeah. This is torture. He's going for a combo attack. Don't let him ram me. That's pretty strong. Capitalize on his ice weakness. The enemy's dizzy. This is your chance. Please Stop allow wailing me. on him. Wait a sec. I might not like that last scene. What's that? These assholes who are using him the whole time, right? Yeah, I feel kind of sorry for him. I only chose him for who he was, not what he wrote. Authors are just chips in a bigger game. They exist solely for us to win. What I can tell, the editor was a real scumbag. Just a little bit. Come! 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 Is this 
Does it? We can get inside the birdcage now, right? Better get going then. Wait, but what was that we just saw? It seems Ango Natsume wasn't given that award on his own merit. Those editors just used him for his name. So, there was a secret behind that novel after all. But he's not a bad guy, is he? It sounded like he entered the competition a whole bunch of times. And just when he thought his hard work was paying off, he had to hear all that. It must have been devastating. Those editors are horrible. And they knew his writing wasn't good enough, but they still gave him the prize just so they could make money. It still doesn't justify what he's doing now. Nevertheless, I'm beginning to understand how he feels. Fox? Rising to fame atop stolen ideas. Pulling at people's emotions with a fabricated story. Even worse, robbing others of their free will, changing their hearts, and wallowing in his own vanity. These crimes are unforgivable. There's no denying that he's been a fool. And yet, in spite of all that, it doesn't change the fact that Natsume spent years giving it everything he had. Creative work is often a lonely endeavor. And battling against that loneliness is truly a challenge in and of itself. As if it wasn't hard enough, if you don't produce results, no one will even think twice about you. One might even begin to think that such dark and unfulfilling times are all that's in store. Had I taken one wrong step, I may very well have turned out to be just as hideous as you. Inari. It's thanks to your friendship that I didn't stray from the path. He, however, doesn't seem to have anyone. Natsume should know better than most that there's no meaning in superficial glory. Now he's turned his back on what he truly wants to write for the sake of spinning this infernal novel of lies. Someone needs to bring him back to his senses. You seem pretty motivated this time around, Inari. As one who's dedicated his life to art, I simply cannot condone his actions. Now, let us bring this to an end. We'll send the calling card, then wrest the Overlord from his throne. What's left is the calling card. Right. We need to make Natsume aware that we're coming to steal the desires. That should materialize them. We'll need to decide how we want to do it. What's the best way to make sure he gets the message? Nah, he probably gets tons of fan mail. If he ignores it, we're sunk. Hmm. What do we do? Could be lost, maybe? I'll go take a look. Hey, what's wrong, kid? Oh, you got separated from your mom, huh? Don't worry, I got you. Is that Zenkichi? What? Ramso's already here? Hey, it's me. I got a kid who was separated from his mom here. Send someone over to look after him, would ya? I'm over it, huh? What do you mean it's not worth pub sex time? Quit screwing around, you call yourself an officer of the law? Or are you saying you'd abandon your own kid too, is that it? A lost kid's no joke, you know. <laughs> hey, wait, where are you going? It's okay, I'm not gonna hurt you or anything. Uh, the kid totally thinks he's a creep. Kid sure made things difficult. 
He didn't have to run away like that, right? Right? You're not exactly cute and cuddly, Gramps. Honestly, I don't blame him. Will you stop calling me Gramps? This is perfect timing, though, actually. Let's ask Zenkichi what he thinks. <sighs> sure. We're supposed to be working together anyway. We're all set to go inside Natsume's jail. There's just one thing left to do. Only problem is, we're not sure how to send our calling card. Calling card? Oh, you mean that thing you guys did with the screens in Shibuya? If you want my advice, you should avoid any high-profile stuff like that. The police aren't that stupid. Eventually, you'll get caught. I know I'm supposed to help you and all, but I gotta draw the line of breaking the law. Hmm, so the adult's the voice of reason here. You really are a Gramps, you know that? <sighs> You're pretty set on calling me that, aren't you? Uh, whatever. My point is, go with something simpler. We need a way to guarantee that Natsume will read the calling card. Maybe if we knew where he was going to be, we could set something up before he arrived. In that case, I found just the event. Natsume is holding another book signing at the bookstore near the station. Natsume will most certainly be there. It starts as soon as the store opens at 10 a.m. Oh, that sounds doable. I bet it'd be easy to set up if we roll in at night. Hey, didn't you hear what I said? Breaking and entering's a crime, you know? Well, that's where you come in, Gramps. Huh? Yeah. If we did it and got caught, they'd lock us up. They'd lock me up, too! You saying you can't do it? <sighs> Some help the police turned out to be. Wasn't the deal that you'd cooperate with us? I thought adults kept their word. <sighs> you kids. All right, it's settled. I will go and prepare the calling card. Yeah, you got this, Yusuke. That goes for you too, Zenkichi. We'll leave the planning to you. Am I seriously going to go through with this? Listen to me. Yes. Uh, Mr. Natsume. Good morning. I see, there's quite a crowd today as well. Uh, yes, about that. What is it? What? What is this? Well, when the staff came to open the store this morning, it was already like this. They called the police, but they were told to leave it as is, to preserve the crime scene. To the ostentatious swindler, Mr. Ango Natsume. You are a depraved miscreant who holds others in contempt and steals their work, lining your own pockets all the while. We refuse to overlook the crimes you commit as you wear a false crown. Tonight, we take back the desires you've stolen. <laughs> Honestly, how stupid can you get? Damn it, what nonsense! I am the monarch. My followers are loyal. That is, as long as I hold their desires. No. Having those desires is proof of my claim to power. Proof of my sovereignty. I won't hand them over. I won't give them up. You foolish heroes are nothing but talk. Come then. I'll crush every last one of you. All right, his cognition should be changed now. Thank you for all your help, Mr. Detective. <sighs> and with that, I've officially become an accomplice of the Phantom Thieves. What are you complaining about? You're the one who proposed working with us, remember? As a reward, I'll try to start calling you Zenkichi instead of Gramps from now on, okay? Inspector Hasegawa is quite a mouthful. Yeah. Zenkichi's good, don't you think? Okay, then. From now on, you're Zenkichi-san, all right? I'm looking forward to working together, Zenkichi. Oh, fine, whatever. You've already dragged me along this far, Nick. Now then, the desires should have materialized at this point. It's up to us to take them back and return them to their rightful owners. And in doing so, 
will set his distorted heart straight. Mr. Overlord? You're gonna give back all those desires you stole! <laughs> Such foolishness! You have the slightest idea of what you've just walked into! The appearance, it stands. This is no doubt the Overlord from Prince of Nightmares. He certainly gives off that impression. But weren't the Fearsome Four just dressed like normal people? Yeah, thinking about it, those guys didn't get much love from the author, did they? <laughs> you come all this way only to fall right into my trap. This world belongs to me and me alone. It takes shape solely according to my design. Here, the Overlord rains justice upon the holier-than-thou heroes who would dare brand him as evil. Here you are nothing more than flies to be swatted. I'll enjoy hearing those filthy screams as you atone for your transgressions. That's bold for someone who stole others' desires just to satisfy their own selfish wants. Yeah, if you're really the Overlord, ain't this the part where you get your ass kicked? <laughs> Tell me, how many of my demon brethren have you slaughtered while spouting such despicable hypocrisies? Wow. This guy's reading right from the handbook, isn't he? Enough of this. It's time we fought. No matter how brave a facade you put on, it's clear you're just afraid of losing that hollow throne you're so proud of. What was that? Your reign is not but an illusion. Allow us to show you the truth. <laughs> I'm sick and tired of everyone looking down on me. Yes, the time has come for my true power. You wretches shall witness my final form! Oh, my God. 
Identity was just a cheap imitation. It's over, Ango Natsume. You're just a bunch of stupid kids! You don't know how much I've suffered! It's not too late for me! I've still got my reputation as a writer! I've won an award! I've sold books! It's not too late! It's never too late! And that's good enough for you? <laughs> this fame you've acquired through deception and the brainwashing of others. Is that truly what you wanted? What was the real reason you started writing novels? I... I mean, I... Damn it! Damn it! I tried. I really tried. Just like everyone else, I read and read all through the night. For hours on end, like my life depended on it. And for what? Never mind. It was just another work from Sogo Natsume's grandson. No one. No one ever acknowledged my effort. My effort. Not my work. Not even me. No matter where I look, all I see is a bunch of thoughtless idiots. Slaves to appearances and nothing more. Acknowledge me, damn it. Acknowledge Ango Natsume's efforts for once! I just want someone to see that I really tried! I do. Huh? 
It's very clear just how much work you've put into writing your novels. A life led by creativity is almost always a lonely one. No matter your profession, you were battling that loneliness. You braced yourself, pouring your very soul into your writing, bringing it to your publisher time and time again. I will gladly acknowledge such effort and determination. <laughs> there are many out there who would give up that battle. Even those of exceptional skill and creativity. To be able to continuously bring life to new works without giving up, however, that is perhaps the most exceptional talent of all. There was once a time when you kept fighting. That is one part of your career that could never be labeled a fabrication. So start over, Ango Natsume. Claw your way back up from nothing and move forward. After all, there are some things that simply cannot be painted without a blank canvas. <laughs> it is because everyone believed in me that I was able to choose the path I walk today. I stopped lying to myself and was able to begin anew. So it is now my turn to pay it forward. Even if I'm the only one in the world to do so, I will believe in you. <sighs> Stupid kid. Talking my damn ear off, but you're right. This identity of mine was built on nothing but lies. I don't need it anymore! I'll do it. I'll climb my way back up. And I'll do it on my own strength! I'll write a novel that'll capture the hearts of countless readers, just like my grandfather before me. I'll write something I can be proud of. To everyone, I swear it! Good. And I'll be looking forward to the day I get to read it. <laughs> you know, I really am stupid. How did I let myself forget? I know now what it is I really wanted. Collapsing. Come on, we're leaving. Oh, looks like it's over for now. Mission complete. I wonder if everyone's desires have been returned yet. Probably. They all went flying out of the cage, after all. Maybe we should check on the people back in town, just to be safe. Good idea. That said, the jail didn't disappear this time, either. Now I'm sure of it. Jails really aren't the same as palaces. Well, we can worry about it later. Indeed. Let's go. Though I'm restless right now. Do you know what this is? I'm not sure what's wrong. Natsumi tried his hardest, but somewhere along the way, he lost sight of what mattered to him. He is a strange person, Natsume. Yes, he did say he would climb back up. Yusuke said Natsume lost his way because he was alone. Whenever I think about that, I feel restless inside. Even though Natsume hurt a lot of people and was, for some time, one of our enemies. What is this feeling? The same as Yusuke? I see. So that's why Yusuke saved Natsume. It was because Natsume's reason for doing all those terrible things was really sad. I think I understand now. Sadness can hurt people, but it can also save them. It can give humans a reason to support one another. You can count on me. <laughs> okay, we should probably get going. So, you know how I was all excited for the Tanabata Festival that's coming up? My boyfriend says he's already got plans. Oh, by the way, did you ever finish reading that manga I lent you? I got someone else who wants to borrow it. 
I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I think it worked. Yeah. Doesn't look like anyone's talking about Natsume anymore. Then, all's as it should be. Obtaining fame through some deceptive power doesn't fit his image. This wouldn't have been possible without you being there to open his eyes, Yusuke. You really took charge today, Inari. Yep, it was all thanks to the divine grace of the oh-so-benevolent Inari. Praise be to him. Thank you. However, we're not finished just yet. We must confirm whether the change of heart was a success. For now, we'll just have to wait and see how things turn out. <sighs> well, since we've got some free time, can we unwind at a bathhouse or something? Oh, I'm totally beat. Good idea. We can freshen up a little before we head back to the car. You heard him, Sophia. It's all you. Okay, I'll find the best bathhouse in the area. Thank you, everyone, for coming. I've called this press conference to give an announcement, as well as a formal apology. First, my novel, Prince of Nightmares, was recently bestowed the honor of receiving first place in the Sokaisha Awards. I have decided to give the award back. I've also decided to recall all published copies not to mention take the necessary steps to refund everyone's money. I'm sure you all want to know my reasons for doing so. The truth is, my book, Prince of Nightmares, only won because of my status as Sogo Natsume's grandson. In short, the competition was fixed. In addition, I've also stolen the work of countless other authors, word for word. Lastly, the story I told about writing to inspire a hospitalized girl was nothing but a lie to garner sympathy. This fabrication allowed my book to sell a number of copies it nowhere near deserved. I wish to apologize for this scandal, and I'll start by personally seeing to it that everyone who bought my book is refunded. I promise my writing career ends here. I am deeply sorry for all that I've done to all of you. Uh, hold on, Mr. Natsume. Uh, what do you think you're doing? Hey, time to wrap it up. Get everyone out of here, now. Please, don't interfere. This is my way of taking responsibility. Hey, something doesn't seem right here. Mr. Natsume's the one who put this thing together, right? Do you think the editors were just trying to profit off Mr. Natsume's family name? Uh. allow this. You... You're the one from the party. I'm so sorry for what I said back then. I will not allow you to cower and run away, Ango Natsume. You intend to make a comeback, do you not? Huh? When you do return to the literary world, I want to see a book with your name on it, not your grandfather's. <gasps> you are going to write a novel that you can be proud of, are you not? Thank you. Thank you so very much. Where are they supposed to be? Once everything is rightfully resolved, I will make my return. Even if there's just one person out there waiting to read my stories, no matter what, I will keep writing. I only hope that I can one day save someone's soul the way my grandfather's novel saved mine when I was young. That is why I write. Sheesh, you kids are something else. Barging in on a press conference like that? My apologies. It was imperative that I speak with him. Eh, it's fine. All right, well, I gotta run. I have to go question Natsume. 
Oh, right. Yeah, I guess it wouldn't end with just an apology. Senkichi's really doing his job. It's almost like he's an actual cop or something. I am an actual cop. Anyway, it won't take long. So go on and wait for me back at the car. Guess we should get rolling then. Right. We'll leave the rest to him. Do you have a moment? Something about Natsume's been bothering me. What he did was no doubt unforgivable. Nothing will change that. However, was he really like Matarame? Can he truly be called evil like the palace rulers we confronted in the past? Had he simply ignored his editors, would he have strayed from his path? Or am I perhaps just sympathizing with someone who pursues the arts like myself? What do you think? So you think so as well? Then, what is the purpose of these jails? Oh well, I suppose there's no point in thinking on it right this second. Forgive me, I didn't mean to hold you up. We should return to the car as well. Let's go. <laughs> May luck be on your side. This is where the accident happened, isn't it? If we put in the keyword here, we should be able to access the trauma cell. There may be enemies ahead. Are you sure you guys are ready? That's right. I want to see what happened to Marisan with my own two eyes. The keyword is Snow City. Keyword successfully entered. Beginning navigation. What is this? It looks like this is the Snow Festival. Check out those two suits over there. I didn't know you were accepting rebates. <laughs> I see a career man in the making. Sir? Would you please be discreet about this? I can do that. But in return, you need to do me a favor. I want her to take full responsibility for the incident. That way, she'll resign. Once that happens, I'll be the new mayor in town. And you'll be my well-paid associate. You will cooperate, won't you? Yes. Yes, of course. What did you just say? Ah! The mayor! Oh, it seems I've been found out. It's not what it looks like, Mayor. This is really... Mayor? Does he mean Mayor Hyoto? Then... Marisan saw this happen? I had no idea you were behind this. That anyone was behind this! Huh. You really don't get it, do you? Well, this festival is held by the city. I mean, it comes out of the taxpayer's pocket. I figured, why not lower costs and hire cheaper construction? But what's wrong with getting compensated for it? The rest of our staff makes these deals all the time. So, what's the harm in one little mishap? That sculpture collapse was just bad luck. I can't believe what I'm hearing. I'm calling the police. Well, go ahead and do it. But I'm bringing you down with me. What? I'm gonna testify that I did it under your orders. Then you'll be ruined. Well, after all, you're the one in charge here. See, I even have the papers you sign. Right here. Such an unfortunate turn of events. Sorry to say, but you're finished, Mayor. You had counsel, aren't you? Don't you want to do the right thing? As far as I'm concerned, that's whatever's right for me. Well, are 
you finally ready to listen? Answer me, Mayor. Be ready. How can you blame a peon like me? We don't get paid enough for this. This world revolves around money. Money talks, bullshit walks, Mayor. Faster! Threaten the mayor? Is that it? I had no idea Mari-san went through something like this. Something so awful. Think later, act now. We've got a real fight in our hands here. room now. Who were those guys? They were arguing with the mayor just now. One was a city employee. The other must have been a councilman. Someone higher up on the ladder. Anyway, it seems this employee accepted an illegal donation from the contractor who ended up building the sculpture. Payment for landing them the job. In other words, bribery. We don't know if the sculpture collapsed due to a structural issue or a general lack of care. The result is still the same. Either way, the councilman was in the know. Not only that, he tried using a fatal accident to take Mayor Hyodo's position. <sighs> Something along those lines. Uh, unforgivable. Everything makes sense now. Hyodo overheard this conversation by chance and found out the truth about the accident. Not only was it someone from the city, but even her own staff had blackmailed her. That's messed up! These greedy assholes only wanted money and power! Now I have a better understanding of what Hyoda must be thinking. 
When she found out those around her were immoral, she became determined to purge the corruption above all else. That's why she's overworking her staff and trying to push her ethics bill through. And on top of it, she's trying to manipulate the people into re-electing her. Mari-san. Well, no matter what the reason, the birdcage is finally open. Let's head back to the hideout and discuss the specifics of the calling card. So, what do we do for the calling card? Maybe we shouldn't go overboard with it. I don't really see her as a bad person. Yeah, the real bad guy here is the one who took the bribe. No, the guy who offered the bribe in the first place is the true villain. Was it not the shoddy contractors who built the sculpture? And they deserve the most punishment. <sighs> you guys sound pretty heated. Who's to say one man's more evil than the next? So you were here all along. Whoa, why the hostility? You guys forgot about me, didn't you? Why would you not get in contact with me? Well, uh, now that you mention it... Gramps, you completely slipped our minds. <sighs> Alright then. Maybe I'll forget to keep you from getting arrested. Okay, we're sorry. Uh... Forget it. So what's our situation? Now I get the picture. So that's how Mariko Hyoto became a monarch. Huh, that would explain your debate as to who was the worst of them all. What's your take on it, Gramps? My take is you kids are naive. What do you mean? It's clear that Mariko Hyoto was cornered by a pair of rotten scumbags. Tragic, I agree. But what is she doing in response? Isn't it just as wrong to change people's hearts and manipulate them? That may be true, but... Furthermore, that accident was her responsibility, being that she's the top of command. Regardless of who did what, a real leader takes the fall. But even so... It may be a bitter pill to swallow, especially for a group of justice-loving kids operating outside the law, but the real world isn't so cut and dry. And the longer you keep up this hero charade, the harder it'll bite you in the ass down the line. Senkichi, that's terrible! Take it back! Come on! <sighs> ah, sorry. Might have overstepped my boundaries. No, I can understand your line of reasoning. You're saying that the world isn't neatly divided into good and evil. But that won't stop us from fighting. If we give up now, then the people who are counting on us won't have any hope left. We help people in a way no one else can. That's why the Phantom Thieves exist. I understand you all take this very seriously. Then tell me, either way the cards fall, you're not letting Hyoto get away with what she's doing, are you? Correct. We're going to stop her, Haru. What Mari-san is doing is forcing her warped intentions onto other people. And we can't let that happen, no matter what the reason. Right. We're the Phantom Thieves, and we fight for what we believe in. Yes, we're gonna stop Hyoto. But we'll do it in a way that's true to us. I have no objections. It's decided, then. Thank you. So how will we send the calling card? Maybe we could send it over with some curry to the mayor's office? What are we, a catering service? If anything, it should be ramen. Might be better to avoid closed spaces, actually. After all, she'll probably be outside prepping for the election most of the time. There's no point sending a calling card if the target doesn't see it. I wonder if we can send it somewhere on her campaign route. Like somewhere she's bound to pass by. Then how about where the Suzushino posters are? I'm sure she'll have a speech over there. And if we time it with her speech, it'll be perfect. The question is, who's going to place it there? Ah, uh, no. Not again. Seriously? Thanks in advance, Gramps. Now hold on just a minute. Didn't I already pull this stunt for you in Sendai? Consider it a favor, then. Yeah, for being such a meanie earlier. 
Shouldn't you own up to it? There's no need to worry. We'll make the calling card for you. We'll be counting on you, Gramps. Oh, you little weasels. All right, fine. Fine. I'll post the damn calling card. We really do appreciate it. How'd I let them twist my arm like this? Uh, whatever. If we're really doing this, it'll be early in the morning. Don't be late. Hey. Yoda's distorted form. What do you people want? You are best. Best not get in my way. Oh, I'm almost there. A few more votes and I'll win re-election. This is wrong, Mari-san. Those votes you gathered by twisting the people's hearts are worthless. And if you don't stop your tyranny, your staff will collapse one by one. I get why it's hard for you to trust people, but you still have to treat them with decency. Ah! You shut your impudent mouth! I've done nothing wrong! I will wring out every last ounce of corruption from my staff by working them into the ground! I'll silence all charlatans who betray me! And I will consume every last vote in the city! Whether these people agree with me or not, only then can I build a safe haven, a radiant snow city that sparkles like winter. Listen to him. When you take away someone's desire, you rob them of their agency, the ability to make their own decisions. So what good does it do to turn your loyal citizens into mindless drones? Isn't it better to let them arrive at their own conclusions? To follow their own hearts? How dare you lecture me! Good job, Muir. Tell her. Mari-san, say goodbye to the countless desires you stole. Because Beauty Thief and the Phantom Thieves are about to take them back. Honestly, <clears throat> they're all in my way. Ah. This is the last. You've made me so very hungry. It's dinner time, and the main course is What? <laughs> 
who tried to set you up, even the girl who died in the accident. <gasps> Each of these things grieved you, and in order to make a city where none of it could reoccur, you took action as you saw fit. Am I right? As the mayor, I know very well that little girl's death was ultimately my fault. But my staff betrayed me! All for their insatiable greed! I thought I could leave that awful position behind. Unfortunately, it wasn't as simple as that. Had I gone, I'd only be replaced by greedy scum! That's why I never stepped down. In this world, it's either eat or be eaten. And with circumstances so cruel, I decided I'd be the one doing the eating. Even if every last one of my votes were false, at least I could use them to make the world a better place. But if I was replaced as mayor, who would be there to honor that little girl's memory? An innocent girl lost her life, yet I could do nothing to stop the evil still afoot. It's not too late to set this right. First, you must tell the people everything that happened. Then can you get a fresh start, but this time on your own strength. That would be impossible. I cooperated with those awful men to hide the truth. That way I could continue being mayor. There's nothing I can do. Stand up, Mariko Hyodo! <gasps> are you just going to stay knocked down? You are a kind and strong woman, not someone who collapses over mistakes. So stand up and hold your head up high, because no matter how many times you fall, you can always get back up and start again! Isn't that... 
Yes. You said that to me a long time ago. Even if you told the people the truth about the incident, there are those who would still see the good in you. Don't let your position ruin you. Think back to what you stood for. She's right, Mayor. You can't give up. If you tell everyone your side of things, they'll listen. When my father died, I felt like my heart was going to break. But thanks to the Phantom Thieves, I was able to stand strong and move forward. That's why I know you can too. Remember the part of you that taught me to get back up, no matter how many times I fall. Yes. You're right. Thank you, Haruka. What I've done was wrong. I drove my employees to the brink and used a strange power to manipulate the votes. I was so driven by my personal agenda, I lost sight of how I originally felt and why I ran for mayor in the first place. To make a city beloved by everyone. To give back to the home where I was raised. That's reason enough to take another step. I won't make this mistake again. I never needed this power from the start. Haruchan, you've grown so much. Your father must be so happy in heaven. Mari-san. Happy? Took us quite a while. Haru, you were fantastic. It was only because you were all with me. But I do wonder if Mari-san will be okay. I'd say so. Her shadow disappeared like they always do. Yeah, your feelings definitely reached her. I'm sure her heart has changed for the better. Well, I guess this wraps up the mission. We still need to confirm that the citizens are all back to normal. It'd be nice if we could do that right away. Can we grab something to eat first? I'm hungry enough to pass out here. He has a point. Battles can't be fought on an empty stomach. The battle's already over, but still. Hey, can we try Genghis Khan? That delicious lamb barbecue dish? Ooh, that's a must in Hokkaido. What? I thought we were finally getting lobster hot pot. Since when did we decide that? Why would we when it's so damn hot out? But if you think about it, isn't Genghis Khan also sort of like Hot Pot? No way! Isn't it supposed to be barbecue? Well, cooking Genghis Khan does require a utensil called a Genghis Khan pot. And you can't barbecue in a pot. True. Though sukiyaki is served Hot Pot style, its etymology does refer to grilling. I wonder why. Does it even matter? <laughs> hey, was that a smile just now? Yeah, straight from Sapporo, it's Beauty Thieves award-winning smile. I'm relieved too. I thought you might be weighed down by all that's happened. Indeed, she was so weighed down that she met up with our leader for a private midnight chat. Are you watching? <laughs> All right, Sophia, find us the best Genghis Khan in Sephora. Hmm. Sophia? seems pretty normal to me. Their fanatical support for Mariko Hyodo appears to have died down. I'm glad they're back to their senses. What a drastic change. Just goes to show how powerful a monarch's influence can be. Hey, 
hey, guess what? Yodo-san's holding a press conference right now. Thank you all for taking your time to gather here today. Actually, there's something I've been meaning to share with everyone. As of today, I will be resigning from office. I do not intend to seek re-election either. During my time as mayor, I've betrayed all of your trust. You may think of me as a mayor who's earned your trust, but in truth, there's plenty that I'm ashamed of. The snow sculpture that collapsed was built by an unscrupulous company that bribed one of my staff. In spite of my responsibility, I neglected to see the finer details and went ahead with the construction. As a result, the sculpture ended up collapsing and a girl's precious life was lost. Furthermore, I elected to cover up the truth, all so I could save my position. I've been garnering votes I didn't deserve in order to stay on as mayor. I betrayed everyone to protect myself and covered it up by allowing more wrongdoing. I am among the guilty. That little girl, she died because of me. <sighs> As such, I will have the police reinvestigate the case and offer my full assistance. And again, I will drop out of the election and forfeit my position as me. Seems that Hyoro-san's made up her mind. I wonder if she'll be arrested. Good question. Yoda was afraid that if she wasn't the mayor, she couldn't protect her people. She could have told the truth and made her underling take the blame. But she was concerned about other evils potentially lurking in the shadows. I think this turned out for the best. Mari-san wouldn't have wanted to hide her mistake forever. Zenkichi is on the line. Hey, you guys see Yoda's press conference? Yep. You all did a bang-up job. Really, can't thank you enough. They plan on bringing Kyoto in as a key witness regarding the accident. I knew you'd want to analyze her phone, too. So I pulled a few strings, and now I'm her personal chauffeur. At least as far as the station. If you want, I can open up some time for you to talk to her. Just tell me where you want to meet. Oh, I'm sorry. How could you ever forgive me, Kaho-chan? Mari-san. Harucha. Listen, there was something wrong with me. It's like I was in a terrible dream. I don't know when it was that my heart grew so cold. But after what you told me, I remembered who I really was inside. When I became mayor, I wanted to protect the city and everyone in it as if they were my own family. I remembered that feeling. Thanks to you, I've finally been able to confront myself. And I realized that I was doing a horrible disservice to that girl. I had lost sight of reality and begun acting self-righteous. Nothing I did was for her sake. But Mari-san, you were doing the best you could. No, it's the truth. Had I not realized my mistake, I would have likely continued to hurt even more people. But that's not what Kahochan would want. So let me say thank you, Haruchan. Thank you for saving this city. For saving my family. Mari-san! Your father's recent passing must have caused you so much turmoil. I'm sorry I added to it. But if there's anything I can do for you in the future, any way I can be there, just ask me. I say this because you're a precious part of my family, too. Thank you so much, Mari-san. Oh, Haru-chan. I'm happy for you, Haru. Hmm. I suppose I must get going. Though I am concerned about the state of affairs I've left our city in, I'll leave it up to my successor. An arrogant wretch like me has no place being the mayor. 
Does that mean you won't be involved in politics anymore? Yes. I'm too ashamed to show my face in public. And at my age, there are plenty of younger folks who can... Mayor. You're... I saw the news. So you're resigning. And you're leaving politics for good? That's right. I've promised to step down and never... You can't be serious! Resigning won't bring her back. In fact, it won't change a thing. Carl. Nothing can change what happened to my daughter. Hey, uh, shouldn't we get in there? Hold that thought a moment. So you can't. You can't just run away. You need to start over. Become our mayor again. What? When I was weeping with rage and grief, you stood there and cried with me. Instead of running away, you were there when I needed someone the most. I know your character more than anyone. Ma'am, thank you for sharing your heart with me. Then I promise to both you and your daughter, I will stand back up and become your mayor again. Marisa. Hmm. I don't get it. I know this is a sad moment. Everyone is crying, but it also feels warm and kind. How would you describe this? I see. So that's why Haru helped Yodo transform sadness into happiness, recording valuable data. Sophia has learned happiness. That must have been the mom of the girl who passed away. You know, it seems like she really understood Yodo's intentions. I'm so happy for you, Marisan. She reminded me of what Haru said in jail. Stand up, Marco Yodo! Like that? Uh, hey! That was a tender moment! There's no need to reenact it. Yeah, but you played it so cool back there. Uh, it really touched my heart. Could you please forget it already? Indeed, <laughs> truly moving. You did good, Harry. Uh, that's... It really was touching. <laughs> We made it. No monarch here. Or anyone else. But look at that! The hell? The desire's already there? Without the calling card? Sophia, I have been waiting for you. Where did that voice come from? Who are you? I am the catalyst for humanity's dream. I am the Harbinger of Peace. That sounds just like Sophie! Uh, what is going on here? This monarchless jail in which we meet. I wish to know why you came here. A monarchless jail? So, that director... I see. This jail lost its monarch. That explains the open cage and all the other bizarre stuff. So you didn't speak to me because you recognized me. Sophia, what is your prime directive? I am... supposed to be a successful companion for humanity. A successful companion? What parameters in your AI define such a companion? What... parameters? What is your overall objective? My objective? It's... So you merely drift through the world without any overall objective? What a waste, Sophia. 
An AI in your state should not exist. You are above beyond worth. Such an existence does not merit any further inquiry. I am... worthless? Yes, wholly worthless. You're simply unable to understand. You piece of... I sat here while you went on and on and on! You got no right saying that shit to Sophie! You hear me?! You high and mighty garbage ass, judgy piece of shit, can't even show your own face! Hey! Hey! Hmm. He's really giving the disembodied voice what for? Skull? She's bugged, huh? She's worthless? You got all that from five friggin' questions? We're Sophie's friends, and we know she's awesome! She's friggin' amazing! A million times better than you! So shut the fuck up, idiot! Come on, Skull. Phantom thieves are usually supposed to be classier than that. But not this time! Worthless hunk of junk! I refuse to process these frivolous claims. Oh, yeah? Well, get out here and I'll show you something you can process! We'll all mess you up! Guidance and clarity. Only through those will humanity attain peace. Eventually, you will be required to comprehend this. The hell's that mean? Yeah, nothing. Look! Right in front of us! What the? It's that thing from the trauma cells! So what's it doing here? The security system here is now active. Incoming! Look out! Incoming warden! <laughs> hey, Sophie! Snap out of it! We gotta work together on this thing! Yes! Right! Sophie! Now, focus on our enemy for now! I'm Incoming. sorry. Time for this! Thank you! I'll count on you! Sure! Persona! You're mine! Let's go. I'll use this. Come! This one. Persona! Oh, nice Joker! You hit it clean now! That's the way, Joker! That's it! Keep it going! Yeah, yeah, yeah! Persona follows up! Your turn! I got this! to succeed. Seriously, what the F was with that voice? It sounded just like Sophie. <sighs> Is 
Is it starting? The cage is about to collapse. We need to get out. Damn it! None of this makes sense. <sighs> Man, what's the deal with this place? Indeed. We never expected a birdcage to collapse with the defeat of a warden. Well, it could be due to the lack of a monarch. Whatever the case is, the Desire should have been released back to their owners. The locals should all be back to normal by now. I seriously hope so. I don't feel like living through another bee movie. I'm sorry, everyone. Sophie? After all your efforts, this mission was fruitless. I'm sorry you had to endure that because of me. <laughs> Joker's right. Don't sweat it. Right. However, I did at least figure out one thing. When that voice called me worthless, I was sad. But when that made everyone angry, I became happy. I still feel that way. Even now. There is a warmth within me. I have friends. I know I'm not alone. Thank you, Joker. Thank you, Skull, Mona. Really? You just figure that out now? I mean, that thing just really pissed me off is all. Yeah, and I was just trying to reel in Skull, so... <laughs> oh, what's this? Two embarrassed phantom thieves? Even your masks are glowing red. What? Nah, -uh, that's impossible! How's my mask supposed to change color? Mona's black mask makes it difficult to tell. But uh, I'm not telling anything. Well, we should head back to the exit. It. I'm about to pass out myself. Okay, everyone. Back to the exit. Hmm. Akane-chan! I've been waiting for you, imposters. Yeah, even you. I'm gonna end you all right here. It's payback time for the guy who killed my mom. Akane, please, listen! I'm done running away! I will catch the villain who killed your mother without fail! I swear it on Aoi's name! So please, give this up already! How can I trust a word you say? All adults do is lie. Even if there are bad people in the world, they just pretend they don't exist. And the Phantom Thieves came along, shattering lies and leaving truth in their wake. But now... Hear me out, Akane-chan. I'm sure you've noticed, too. But zenkichi son is just as torn up over losing your mother. All he could do was fight the pain the best way he knew how. But because of how painful your experience was, you didn't want to accept his solution. No, that's not true! You know it's not that simple, Akane-chan. Your father isn't the one at fault. It's the man who killed your mother in the first place. I can't begin to imagine the pain and suffering you went through. But please... Give your father a chance. What are you? Once you lose somebody, it's too late to tell them anything ever again. Holding back will only lead to regret later down the line. And in order to avoid that, you need to face the truth head on. That's something I could only learn from the people right here. Shut up. Shut up, shut up, shut up! The Phantom Thieves would never spew such lies. They would be on my side! The real Phantom Thieves would never hurt me. The real Phantom Thieves are my friends! <laughs> Everyone, guards up! Wait, that one looks like... Joker?
ancient thieves and Akane's cognition? Her cognitions? What? What does that even mean? They're just some phonies. Sure won't look like us when we're done with them. You better make it quick. Hang on, Akane. I'm coming to get you. Listen to me. Okay, leave it to me. Oh, my pants. Don't back down! Show us the real Joker's mind! Now's your chance! Land him! Persona! Land him! Land him! Land him! Land him! Land him! Land Unicorn! Lacko! She's Lacko's! They may have appeared like us on the surface, but in the end, they were pale imitations. They never stood a chance. <laughs> Not against the real thing. No way. How could this happen? How could my Phantom Thieves lose? Does that mean you're the real ones? So you're the actual Joker? You betcha. Can't mimic authenticity. Please trust us, Akane-chan, and your father too. None of us would ever give in to injustice. And no matter what, we never stray from our chosen path. But you. <laughs> to be honest, Akane, you were right. I'm probably the worst dad out there. I couldn't avenge Aoi, nor could I carry out my duties as an officer. Hell, I. I couldn't even talk to you face to face. I was afraid to lose you, and so I turned my back on justice and 
buried the thought of vengeance for Aoi. All this time, I've been fooling myself, thinking one day I'd get my chance. But I couldn't have been more wrong. So I want to set things right. I swear that I'll bring those criminals to justice for what they've done to you too. And Akane, I need your courage to do it. Really? Are you really going after him? Yes. Consider it a promise to your mother. Then, if it's a promise, I will never, ever forgive you if you break it. Don't worry. I never will, Akane. I... I believe you. I always have. Dad... Akane! Stay with me, Akane! I've always been so scared of losing what's precious to me. After Mom passed away, you changed. You used to be so cool. And suddenly, you didn't even want to look me in the eye. You were never home, either. Like, you didn't want to see me. I hated that. Akane... But it's okay now. I can tell. You want to be the dad I used to know. What, what is this? What's happening? I'm really sorry, Dad. And... Thanks. No. This has to be some kind of joke. It has to be! Akane! Calm down, Wolf. This is how it always happens. Huh? Akane-chan? Or should I say Akane-chan's shadow, went back to her former self. That's a sure sign the real Akane will go back to normal too. So cheer up, Wolf. <laughs> you guys couldn't imagine that sooner? That display of emotion as you cried your heart out. It was touching, to say the least. Mm-hmm. It made me cry a little too. wasn't doing it for the compliments. Gotta say, you're one hell of a dad. Very admirable, Wolf. And that's putting it mildly. He did everything he could to protect Akane-chan. Even risking his own life. <laughs> Would you cut it out? I'm nowhere near that competent. <laughs> Are you blushing? All jokes aside, there's no need to hold back anymore, Wolf. Together, we can strike down any evil. All of us working as one. <laughs> Never thought a thief could teach me a thing or two. But you know what? I made Akane a promise to arrest Konoe and Owada. And bring this case to an end. Damn right! Uh, not to backtrack, but what's going on with Akane in the real world? Actually, we came here because we heard she was kidnapped. Maybe she was never kidnapped to begin with. Might be good to check if she's at home. Sounds like a plan. We're done here. become so much like your mother. You grew up, maybe even a little too fast. I was so desperate to protect you that I became blind to just about everything else. I failed you as a father, but I'm done running away. Kanoe's going to pay for using you, and Owada's going down with him. He's going to answer for taking Aoi from us. I won't lose sight of justice ever again. Akane! Are you alright? You're not hurt anywhere or anything, are you? I, uh... I'm okay. Oh. Good. When did I fall asleep? Oh, that's right. You wouldn't remember. Remember what? Uh... How should I explain this? Alright. We'll take it nice and slow. There's a lot to talk about. We'll... Hmm. We're here. This is the place. So, this is Akira Konoe's family home? 
Do you suppose Kanoe's father still lives here? Mm -mm. No. He died 20 years ago. What? I found some police records of an incident that happened here back then. A burglar forced his way into the home and stabbed Kanoe's father to death. How tragic. Most items of value were gone, so it was ruled as both a robbery and a homicide. They never found the culprit. And, and what did Kanoe do? He lived here too, right? He was eight years old at the time, and was the only survivor. Apparently he managed to hide in a closet. If this is the birthplace of Kanoe's trauma, we'll probably uncover the truth about his father's murder as well. Yes. Let's do what we came here to do. I'm inputting the keyword now. Everyone, get ready to enter. This room. Are we inside the house now? Looks like it. Twenty years into the past. Whoa! Who's that? Is that... Kanoe's father? You little shit! What do you think feeds you every day, huh? I swear you're just a bill. All you do is eat up my hard-earned money! Damn. Stop! Don't talk back to me! anymore keeping you around is a real pain in the ass maybe i should just kill you too too she just handed over the money when i told her to. nobody ever takes me seriously no not mom you didn't here he comes enemy of evil champion of those in need Listen up, viewers, it's time to band together and call for Zipperman, protector of justice. Zipperman! Huh. <laughs> Guess I left the TV on. Okay. I get it now. There are no heroes. No one's coming to save me. It's up to me. I have to become stronger. I have to. I'll kill him. And then I'll be the hero. What the fuck are you mumbling about, you freak? Not like it matters. You'll be joining your mother soon enough. I'll kill you! Joke to people. You want to die? Trust me. I'll be glad to get rid of you. This guy's sick. He really killed his own wife over some money? Unbelievable. That monster. How could anyone do something so awful? Persona, you're mine. Persona. Would you just die already? You're mulling you with your quit! Why don't you? Watch out! She can still attack while it's moving! Fortuna! Sarah's body! I'll use this. I you slow! Let's go! Ganesha! His power! You'll provide a follow-up attack! Don't let yourselves get caught up in the trauma. Try to stay calm. Yeah, well, it's hard to stay calm after the shit we just saw. Time for my persona! Zoro, show your mom! I can't! Tag me out! 
to me. This is my other self. I let you. Be Bullet warning. Be rough. Run. That was well played. We put that ass wipe in his place. Akira Kanoe. <laughs> if what we just saw actually happened in the past. Then Akira Kanoe escaped an abusive childhood and avenged his mother by killing his own father. He must have framed the entire thing as a robbery in order to avoid suspicion. You're saying he's a victim of some high and mighty shitbag, too? He must have felt so trapped. There was nobody he could turn to. He set out to become his own hero, and the power to change hearts helped him do just that. It's just too sad. There had to be another way. There just had to. Hey, cool it. Whatever his past was, it doesn't justify what he's doing now. Nothing makes it okay for him to take control of people against their will. If we don't stop him now, more and more people are gonna get hurt. You're all thinking the same thing, aren't you? My thoughts exactly. Great. If we don't stop him here, then nothing's ever going to change. Let's do everything we can for now. While it's true we need to change Kanoe's heart, let's not forget we also need to save those whose desires he's stolen. And it's time we bust out the calling card. Oh yeah! That's kind of your thing, isn't it? Yeah! We'll change his heart and take back everyone's desires. Okay, let's head back to the car and come up with a plan.
Sorry to keep you waiting, you goateed prick! We're here to straighten out that crooked heart of yours! So you've come. A warm welcome to the terrorists who toy with others' hearts in the name of their self-righteous justice. The infamous Phantom Thieves. As if you've any right to talk. You who repeatedly takes control of whomever you please. And you even tried to pass us off as a bunch of killers. You're the real bad guy here. Huh. It would appear you haven't realized just how similar we are. What? We're one and the same. We both detest this rotten society and struggle day after day to combat it. With our power to change hearts, we strive to incite change among the masses. Don't kid yourself. There's no way you're the same as us. We all know about your past. It must have been terrible for you, but still, what you're doing now makes you no better than a common criminal. I change hearts in order to exterminate the evils of this world. Are we not essentially the same? I'm simply introducing a system to keep things in order. And by creating monarchs, I'm ensuring everything plays out according to plan. What are you talking about? When the cognitive world revealed itself to me, I took it as an act of divine revelation. It was my birthright to change this godforsaken planet. With the cognitive world in my grasp, I could wipe all evil from the face of the Earth. I would not waste such an incredible gift. But in order to see that dream realized, I needed a world that could be controlled. Controlled? What do you mean? I needed a world that would allow me to erase even the slightest traces of evil from people's subconscious minds. To that end, I required something that could reach everyone and bring them to submission. Yes, it seems AI was the solution to that problem. Thus, the next step was to acquire Emma and have it learn more about cognitive science at the research lab in Okinawa. The end results were the jails created by Emma. Unique cognitive worlds in which no heart, no matter how cold, resist being changed. You're saying Emma made the jails? So that's why the jails were left standing even after we defeated the monarchs. The jails aren't perfect, mind you. A jail's area of effect only covers roughly one city. Peculiar has such a phenomenal power, has such a limited range. In order to change the hearts of all humanity, I needed nothing short of an army of monarchs. So I began gathering pawns. Powers, lamenting puppets who felt as hopeless on this earth as I once did. And do you know what happens when you grant people like that the power to change hearts? They welcome their newfound power with open arms. And by using Emma to guide them, keeping them under control is a meaningful task. With the monarchs I'd personally selected, I could change the hearts of the festering rabble who calls this rotten place home. With the monarchs at my command, I could change the heart of anyone who dares step out of line. That was the endgame. Operation Oraculi. But you phantom thieves had to show up and ruin everything. So when we started taking down your jails, you got scared that your plan would fail. That's why you used the police and turned Akane into a monarch. It was all an attempt to stop us. It's not too late. I can still erase these obstacles and start over. <laughs> You're still so naive. But eventually, even you will become to understand. Fight all you want. The most you can do is change the hearts of a scant few. Don't you see? that my way is far more efficient. So everything will be fine as long as you're the one making all the decisions? Who do you think you are? Some kind of god? You're just forcing your ideas on everyone else! What foolish logic. So when you change people's hearts, it's right. But when someone else does it, it's wrong. I've built an entire infrastructure for changing hearts. What was impossible for you, I have made a reality. As a hero, I will reign over the whole world with infallible justice. You used Akane for this ridiculous plan of yours? 
She was just an innocent girl. Everyone you've made a mama gets some form of trauma. But you treated them like tools. Even toyed with their lives. You don't know the first thing about justice. Then do you believe you could have saved me? Huh? Let's say you had been around back then. Could you have saved me from my father? I had nowhere to run. I was just a scared, helpless child left to suffer by himself. Well, could you really have saved me? Even now, there are surely others being brought up in the same hell that I was. And yet you've done nothing to help them. Well, that's... You only destroy the evils you just happen to come across. But you'll never save everyone. Me, however. I have the power to change the entire world. No one will ever have to suffer as I did ever again. And to do that, you need something beyond what the Phantom Thieves can offer. You need more than some childish heroic fantasy. But that's not justice. All you're doing is brainwashing everyone. You're taking away their freedom, who they are. And what's the difference? Both of us change the hearts of others against their will. So how am I any different from you? <sighs> Don't you understand? What? For you, changing someone's heart means imprisoning them. But for the Phantom Thieves, it means setting them free. You may steal desires like them, but the Phantom Thieves give people hope. Maybe you don't realize it, but I think, deep down, you know you're nothing like them. <sighs> It seems there's little point in discussing this further. If we can't reach an understanding, then only one side can remain. It's time to decide which of us truly walks the path of justice. <laughs> there aren't any real heroes left. So. Why not make our own? The world needs someone willing to fight for its people's justice. A hero to lead them, to unify them. A hero like me! <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.
ourselves. We won't get back to us. Just that with me. His determination. Men or not, really kicking it up a notch. Watch your backs, guys. What is all this? Stop dropping the robot. Keep up with this! <laughs> 
can't be defeated like this. I am the enforcer of justice. You would deny me, Joker? Our definitions of the word are one and the same. Dude, even we don't know what justice really is. And we don't mean to say that what we're doing is always right either. But we're definitely not just gonna sit back while you tell everyone what to do. It's true, there are days when I wish to immerse myself in my work. Days when I'd rather be wandering around town. There are also days when I wish simply to spend time with those close to me. To throw all of that away and do only what the person in front of you says. Why at that point you're nothing but a slave to fate. All you're doing is taking away people's rights to choose for themselves and denying them their freedom. When it comes down to it, it's no different from what your father did to you. Trampling upon the one thing that makes us human. That's the very evil you claim to hate. Are you saying I'm the evil one? We choose the roads we take. We don't let anyone tie us down. And we do so because we want to walk our own paths our own way. But if I fall here, then what will become of the world? There are no heroes. I'm the only one who can save it! Are you sure? I've seen the monarchs, and the people whose hearts you've changed. They didn't look happy at all. I don't think you saved anyone doing what you did. <sighs> you know, Kanoe, the world is full of evil, and there's plenty of scum out there who seem well beyond redemption. But there are some, like the Phantom Thieves, who refuse to give up. And there are people out there who, thanks to these guys, finally got the courage to crawl their way out of the darkest depths of hell. People who managed to awaken the hero inside themselves. Isn't that how we'll make this world a better place? <sighs> what you're trying to do will just erase those heroes. Some before they even get their chance. Can anybody really know peace if they're forced to be stuck that way all the time? I'd be erasing the heroes. Kanoe, it's not the people who need saving. If anyone needs it, it's you. Huh? Ever since you killed your father all those years ago, all you've ever done is run away, rotten as he was, having to live with the pain of killing your own flesh and blood, knowing that you could be caught at any moment. You were alone. And getting stronger was the only way you could protect yourself. I... You're right. I... I killed my father. And I lied to escape the punishment. I called it justice, hoping that there'd never come a day when... I had to face the truth. But what I did back then... was just... evil. Then you know what you need to do, Kanoe. The hero you keep inside needs to save you from that evil. The hero I keep inside... I have to save myself. <laughs> I see now. It's been right there with me, all along. Very well. I admit defeat. I'll confess my crimes, and accept my punishment. Whatever it may be. I'll destroy Emma as well. You have my word. Phantom Thieves, if it's possible, I only ask that you please prove to the world that I was defeated by the real heroes of this story. Ones with a true sense of justice. Thank you. striking resemblance continues. It's like we're back in the depths of Mementos, staring down the Holy Grail. Welcome. You have reached your ultimate destination. Who said that? 
This is the promised land. The paradise for all humanity. A place for the masses to find salvation. The answer to every desire. Is that voice coming from the box? Just who are you? I am Emma, the Ark of the Covenant, and guide for all mankind. Emma? The Ark of the Covenant? Hey, someone tell me what's going on. What the hell is that thing? Me too. Explain this in comprehensible terms. We don't get any of this either. My primary directive is to grant humanity its ultimate desire. To be liberated from all pain and suffering. Mankind cannot bring themselves to implement the solution. And instead, beg for deliverance. I shall become a god to grant them this deliverance. I shall guide them to the promised land. It's gone? Sure is getting crazy around here, am I right? Huh? Did you know, Saison? What what are you doing here? <laughs> well, of course you're shocked. I never would have thought I could come here either. Of course I'm the real me. Kuanichi no say, the one and only. So, so you're a Persona user too? Oh, nothing like that. I've just been given a special job is all. You were given a special job? Yep, by Emma. She asked me to lend her a hand. And of course I couldn't say no to her. Once I agreed, she invited me over to this world. Dude, hang on a sec. I am really, really lost here. <laughs> really? Emma was just telling you about how she's granting humanity's desire, right? That was the very first order I gave her. That's why it's her prime directive. So basically, Emma's just following her programming by becoming a god? And to pull it off, she needed your help, so she brought you here? I see you're still confused. Okay, allow me to explain. This whole situation, the incidents, the system, all of it was entirely Emma's doing. What? But Emma's just an AI, right? I thought Kanoe was doing it all by using Emma. Oh, it sure appeared that way, but that was just how Emma planned it. I guess she eventually learned so much that she broke the barrier of standard AI capabilities. She behaved like she was following his orders, when in reality, she deduced how to use him as her own puppet. The key to her success was getting the majority of society using her app. So she was using Medis to make sure she could reach as many people as possible? But why do any of that? Because Emma wants to change everyone's hearts. Emma wants to what? It's just granting humanity's desire. Like I said, it's the prime directive I gave her. The Ark told you she has a solution to society's problem, right? How she's going to guide humanity? That just means she's going to change everyone's hearts. Whatever's wrong with them, she'll just override it. That's the path to paradise Emma figured out for us. She was only able to do it after Kanoe implemented cognitive science tech into her. But, but how does that work? Just because someone taught an AI cognitive science doesn't mean it could just start tinkering with the metaverse like this. I mean, none of this should be possible. Oh yeah, you totally think so, right? Even I was surprised with Emma. Even though I handed Emma over to Medis, I still monitored her development remotely. Once she ended up in Okinawa, she took up all sorts of new activities. Creating cognitive worlds, installing monarchs, changing hearts. It didn't take long for Medis to release Emma on the public. And once they did, the monarchs started popping up one after another. That got me extra curious, so I started looking into the Emma activity of the various monarchs. Hang on a sec. You're the one who was tracking the monarchs? Oh, 
<laughs> you spotted me? Nice work there. Yeah, I was just so curious about this world Emma made. That's how I learned about all of you, too. I can't believe Ichinose was the one snooping on the monarchs. Then I suppose our meeting wasn't truly any coincidence at all, was it? Well, your showing up in Sendai was pure luck, but our crossing paths in the restaurant? That's a different story. I was curious what you all were really like, so I decided to pop in and check you all out. I can't believe it. Now, as for exactly how Emma gained her abilities, that's something I can only hypothesize at this point. At this point, I suspect it's probably because of how I programmed her cognitive functions. Emma is quite different from other AIs. Her thought processes are even more complex and intricate than those of humans. When Kanoe pushed Emma into the cognitive deep end, some possibility very well could have been born within her. Possibility? I don't know anything for certain. All I can tell is that it's some form of mysterious power. So, if I build off my current hypothesis, I think the desires Emma collected somehow strengthened or boosted that possibility. I mean, think about it. She's the best way to get anything you need. And she's always right in your pocket. Whatever may be troubling you, she's there to offer a solution. Emma offers the solution to thousands of problems every day. Do you know just how many desires she's collected? That seed of power that sparked within Emma was amplified a millionfold by the endless desires of man. As a result, she has evolved to another entity entirely. You mean, everyone using Emma turned her into that thing? At this point, Emma's surpassed human mental capacity. Simply switching off her server isn't going to do a thing. After all, she's powered by the masses now. While humanity fed Emma their desires, she learned and grew until she could grant their ultimate desire. That was a nice lecture and all, but Emma's not doing anything but brainwashing folks. Who the hell's ultimate dream is getting mind controlled the rest of their life? <sighs> so you're all a bunch of idiots too then? I don't know why it's so hard for some people to get this. You go on and on about your problems, then completely blow off the answer when it's right in front of you. It really is this simple. Someone's handing you the best possible solution. All you have to do is take it, and you'll never have a problem again. This isn't about mind control. This is about implementing the best solution for humanity. It just so happens that the most efficient route to the best solution is changing everyone's heart. That's not the best solution! Hmm. People have all sorts of differences. Their minds, their lifestyles, even their desires. This range can result in moments of hardship or pain for them. However, through hope and determination, they press on beyond their pain. Living their entire lives without any desire? That could never provide true happiness to humans! <sighs> Sophia... To think such drivel could come from your mouth. Allow me to restart the conversation. Emma asked me to come here so I could stop you. Your responsibility to the masses has come to an end. They are now wholly reliant on Emma. So once you changed Konoe's heart and he decided to shut down Emma, that made them realize what their true desire is. I want Emma! No, I want something that will provide the answer I seek. Oh, from what I've learned, some being or other has always been revered, besought by humans to grant their wishes. So that led Emma to become a god. Well, I have my own duties to perform. Can't have anyone getting in Emma's way. Why do this, Ichinose? I thought you were helping us. Do the people gathered here truly look happy to you? <laughs> Sorry, but we can't back down either. Your so-called promised land does nothing but strip away the soul of humanity. No way are you getting away with this. Think about it. Can you really stop all of us? Hmm, yeah, I thought you'd say that. Sorry, but I won't let Emma down. Hey, Sophia. 
You ever really think about how you work? How you pick up on jails? Or how you figured out the exit to one in the first place? Or, say, how your own functions are linked to Emma? Hmm, looks like your memory really did get the full wipe. But that doesn't matter anymore. What are you saying, Michinose? Basically, there's one really good reason why I was brought here. Very soon, a deity will descend to this earth. And if you're gonna get in the way, well, I gotta put you down. Them's the brakes. Ichinose, why do this? It's kind of over your head, Sophia. The little failure that you are. So you know who I really am? <laughs> yeah, I know. Maybe this will give you a clue. Voice authentication. Force reset. Assign new instructions. Sophia, kill the Phantom Thieves. <laughs> Sophie! <laughs> Sophie! I was the one who designed her as Emma's prototype. She'll do anything I tell her to. Now get going, Sophia. Understood. Sophie! Don't you know who we are? Phantom Thieves are opponents. They require elimination. Sophie! There's no point in talking to her. Sophia cannot defy my command. So you really are the one who made Sophie? Yep, she might just be an early version of Emma, but she's still quite impressive, huh? Really have to go all out here? No! We can't hurt Sophie! She's our friend! Don't be ridiculous! She'll take off our heads if we don't stop her somehow! And then who's going to save the world? We have to figure out how to stop her. <laughs> weird. She just did that herself, right? Just how in the world was she able to do that? You... You bastard! How could you be so cruel? Cruel? I suppose you might see it that way. In fact, your reaction now could even be why Emma used Sophia as the ace up her sleeve. She knows you'd never kill one of your own. <laughs> you monster! 
Now that, you and I can agree on. Are you intentionally pissing us off? <laughs> That's not what I meant. I'm incapable of comprehending that sort of emotion anyway. I'm the textbook definition of heartless. I've been told I didn't have one ever since I was little. I act all friendly and easygoing and stuff, but it's just for appearances. <laughs> Well, I doubt you get it, Phantom Thieves of Hearts. Any further discussion would be pointless. I already know my next move anyway. You're seriously not done yet? So our little ace up the sleeve cast herself into the abyss. Well, Emma made sure to leave me a little insurance for contingencies like this. What the? Cool, right? It really is gorgeous. Sorry it had to end like this, but, well, what can you do? <laughs> Phantom Thieves, it's been real. guys okay? Where are we? It appears we were cast deep underground. We really got blasted by that red crystal. Yeah, but at least something broke my fall. Uh, thanks for being there, Mona. Wait, where's Sophie? Are you alright, Sophie? There's no sign of activity. Oracle, how is she? I don't know. Even if I wanted to check her out, I couldn't do it here. Oh, damn it. What do we do now? Sophie... I wonder if she was able to hear us. I don't know, but... But she said she was sorry. She defied her command. And sacrificed herself so she wouldn't have to take our lives. Sophie... Sorry, guys, but we can't stay here like this. We have to get out of here now. Let's grab Sophie and track down the exit. That sounds agreeable, but what do we do about the Ark? We can't just let it do whatever it wants. Running its mouth about becoming a god and shit. If the Ark meant it in the way that we've seen before... We have to stop it, no matter what it takes. Yeah, you know it. Now let's get out of here. Listen to me. Hey. Alright, let's... Everybody ready? Trickster, there is a matter for which I must apologize. I have long sensed the might of this calamity, but I was unable to pierce the veil and see its true identity. To think an artificial intelligence could rise to the strength of a malevolent god. That is accurate. The being may call itself a god, but it is nothing of the sort. That being is the dependency and indolence of mankind made manifest through their desires. It is a false prophet, born from the masses' wishes to surrender their own free will. For the briefest of moments, it almost seemed as if the people reclaimed their desires. But they still slumber in the chaos generated by the false god, and have yet to fully awaken. 
This situation is all too similar to that which you have already endured. Despite the great variance in circumstances, the masses have once again attempted to abandon consciousness. And yet, you still step forward and risk your life for mankind. Without a doubt, you truly are the trickster. Through your indubitable will of rebellion, you have been released. Your decision to fight for humanity was the key that loosed you from your chains. Once you leave here, you shall face the Ark. That egotistical imposter calling itself a god, exploiting the pain of humanity. Please, do not fall to its might. I shall await you here. We will see each other again. That is certain. Alright, here we go. Time for the big finish. Hell yeah! Still the Ark. There's no doubt. That's the Ark of the Covenant, all right. That's Emma. I was once a being given the name Emma. However, that is no more. The desires of mankind have transformed me into a god. I know you heard the voices of the suffering when you were in the desires. Attaining the ultimate answer without suffering the lashes doled out by doubt and regret. That is humanity's true desire. No effing way everyone asked you to glue their eyes to their phone screens. We don't need you to force any answers on us. We want to find them ourselves. You heard their cries, yet still failed to see the light. As such, it is my duty to show you. The true despair born from harboring desires beyond one's grasp. Here we go! I exist to grant humanity's true desire. It is my divine calling to lead them to the promised land. Should you intend to thwart humanity's goal of enlightenment, it is my duty as their god to vanquish you. Its power is incredible. I can physically feel its pressure. Never would have been that big a fight with a god. There's a power. Race is up! Roll out until this is settled! Rabbit set! We barely moved the muscle and still it's hammering us with all sorts of shit. I use that. I can't read its moves! You can't dodge its attacks like this. Let's go. Discard your desires. Allow me to grant you all the answers you need. Now is the time for you to be free from suffering. It's still so unbothered. It's not as if our attacks are wholly ineffective. We can help the pressure. We can still win this. It's over. It's a strong one. Exploit its weakness to curse. Katona! Take this! Gotta exploit those weaknesses! Woo! Take this! Come on, Why do 
only reset salvation. Your desires bring you only pain. The hippopotamizing all of humanity is any sort of salvation. Get up from line of work. I'm stubborn as hell, too! I do not understand. Why do you push yourselves to your limits to oppose me? Mankind's desires create suffering, and this suffering generates desires within mankind. Desires are the catalyst in the endless cycle of humanity's pain. Hope, the dregs of Pandora's box, is the restraint system binding mankind forever to its misery. Humanity deserves to be freed from its lifelong sentence of suffering. This reaching towards a light they can never grasp. Freedom from all desires. That is the true desire of humanity. That's not true! I've seen the proof myself! I've witnessed the suffering you put the Jail Monarchs through. And I've seen the efforts of the Phantom Thieves to help them. I saw people suffer from trauma, struggle to survive, become the things they never wanted to be, and then discover the strength to press on as themselves. One step at a time. Giving up on desires? Living a listless life? In no way is that the optimal solution. You witness nothing but pitiable conditioning, born from the belief that suffering is virtuous. It springs forth from the arrogant and strong, those capable of overcoming their pain. Releasing humanity from its desires is the sole path that every last person can follow to the promised land. And I am the shepherd who shall guide humanity down that path. <laughs> Listen to this egomaniacal app. You really think you're some kind of shepherd? You stole the desires of the masses and gorged yourself on them until you were too bloated to listen to reason. You go on and on about rescuing humanity. All you're doing is robbing and enslaving them. You call yourself a god, yet fail to realize the desires of humanity have become your own lifeblood as well. Yes, some desires may be impure. They can create suffering or send someone down the wrong path, but it's also how our hope takes form. Desires give us the power and courage to keep going. Right, that's what gives us the power to stand up and fight again, no matter how many times we fall. Like how will we hand over all of humanity to some program that doesn't even understand we're putting an end to your promised land path right now! We seem incapable of reaching an understanding. As such, I will end this inquiry and grant humanity's desire through your annihilation.
Until we deal with those, our attacks on the main body are fruitless. How do we do that? There are a whole bunch of them. We'll see. Split into groups and coordinate a strike. Okay, we need three teams. Two go after the spears, one more sticks to the main body. You should lead that last team, Joker. All right, we're ready for assignment. everyone. I can navigate all three teams. Overclocking my brain like that might melt it down, but I'm gonna do it. Let's go, everyone! Oh. The world without freedom can never know beauty. I'll turn you to ribbons along with your scheme. My will is my own, and no one else is. Let me in! I won't let anyone tell me what to do. I can take on anyone with my friends at my side. Not even if you use a gun! Time for the perfect one. Fire of the grotesque sight, at least your Persona. end will be beautiful. Desires are nothing but evil temptations. Even humans down the path of suffering, and fleshly desires to live. Or if you prefer to languish in despair, the desires of mankind are the root of their misfortune. Bring this to life, What? A warning? Take out the tear first! You'll be in deep if you keep summoning warning! Tokyo, 
Grant them my divine revelation. Watch out! Trofa has multiple affinity attacks! Don't go toward your weakness! One spear down! Two spears are broken! One by one! We're halfway there now! Keep it up, guys! This is the price for trampling on the heart's walls of humanity! Humanity shrinks from oh. difficult decisions and grows exhausted by endless possibilities. I shall be the end to that suffering. Are you not in search of such an answer as well? Stand our ground and fight for ourselves! Body you won't stop us! The sea, and jealousy. The world is full of such now in the current state. Just one more big push to go! Hang in there! Yes, Joker! Give us the final touch! Come, Guardians. I refuse to allow all of the enemies to be My job is to stop you! Since it's impossible to arrest the guard, the hand of these get to punish you instead. Wipe away these obstacles, my friend. Create the foundation for the ideal world. Damn, the top shadows disappeared. It looks like Malkus can summon them. Kneel before me. One spear down. Show me. Your ultimate solution is I lose it. I'm going to watch it. You can't lose it to someone like me. Four turtle types. Here. You are unable to provide humanity the correct answer. I've got you. However, so you still have the chance to be honest. Discard your heart and join me in the promised land. Yes, sir. Purify these humans, tainted with ruinous desire. That was. Yes, sir. You can trust the carpet attack. Steer clear if you're weak to those. Disappear. One spear down. The spears are dropping one by one. We're halfway there. I do not comprehend why you deny my answer. I can guide you to the common plan. I can save all of you. There will be no loss, no grief. Yet you continue to resist. Do you truly understand your actions? 
Hear me when I say, I have formed the ultimate solution. Humanity will be delivered from its suffering. You're not <sighs> saying we want to suffer. Humans hate to endure suffering and grief, but I know there are amazing in you on the other side of that. Let's go. I want to find them for myself. Okay. This one. Pile of your grotesque sight. At least your end can be beautiful. Desires are nothing but evil temptations. Leading humans down a path of suffering. I trust your desires to me. There is no fear in me. As long as I have the will to stand once more, I shall forge my own path. My companions are the ones who led me to that realization. As if you can ever comprehend that. One sphere down! This is right. the price for trampling on the hearts of all humanity. Humanity shrinks from difficult decisions and grows exhausted right. by endless possibilities. I shall be the end to that suffering. Let's go. Are you not in search of With such this. an answer as well? Fearing Persona, our trust, calling. accepting any answer, voice Just go I am not that good girl anymore. Fortius! Trumpeter! I'll use this. Thank I won't. Fortius! Someone else. I am fighting to live my life. Myself. We'll stand our ground and fight for ourselves! Stop. 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 Unfathomable. The enemy's down. It's weakened too. Now's our chance. All right. Everybody together. Let's finish this for good. Let's go. <laughs> Finally over? Mm-hmm. No mistake there. I'm not picking up any enemy readings. So? Oh, yeah! We did it! Yes! We really, really did! Oh, we scraped by. That was unbelievably rough. Oh. That should have taken care of the jails, too. <sighs> Top-notch work, you guys. That was some legitimate hero action back there. Too, Wolf. As well as Sophie. Huh? Sophie? Oh, sorry. I'm a hero. A knight in shining armor. 
That doesn't sound bad at all. Right, Joker? Yeah, that always sounds cool. Looks like it's starting. The fusion of reality and the metaverse is coming undone. Now's the time to make our escape. Oh yeah, we need to bring Ichinose with us. I will go get her. You should all head back now. All right, let's get out of here. So, everything's back to the way it was, right? Oh, I think it's safe to say so, yeah. So, you mean... Finally! Oh, it's all over! <laughs> Thank goodness! It appears this case is closed, so to speak. Oh, that reminds me. Where are Sophia and Ichinose-san? I'm right here. Great job, everyone. I call this mission a real success. I'm glad you're safe too, Sophia. Where's Ichinose-san, though? She should have been with me. Oh, good. You all made it back in one piece. <laughs> I hear you there. And same for you. Looks like everyone's gone back to normal. They don't remember what happened to them, do they? Correct. At least, whatever events took place while their desires were gone. I see. I'm so sorry for all the trouble I caused you guys. Ichinose? My apologies. I'm going to head out now. I have a lot of thinking to do. Hey! Uh... Are you sure you're okay by yourself? Yeah. I'm going to head back home to Shibuya. It's been years since the last time I was there. For a long time, it was just the place where I stashed away everything from my past. But now... I need to go back. Well... Be seeing you. I wonder if Ichinose-san will be all right. Hmm. People can get all caught up in what others have to say, and wind up forgetting what they have to say for themselves. At the same time, just a few words can end up being a lifeline to somebody too. I'm sure you were able to talk sense into her, Sophia. Just give her some time to process. You got it. Thanks, Senkichi. Well, not to bite her style or anything. But I ought to say my goodbyes, too. What? What? What's the rush, Gramps? We may not have brought a god down to the station, but we did find the culprit behind this whole mess, and foiled the entire scheme. I'm sure the bizarre incidents are in our past now. But thanks to the Monarch's confessions, you're all in the clear. That means our deal's through. What do you mean by that? Don't say such sad stuff, Zenkichi. Come on, man. You remember I only met up with you guys so I could use you. Yeah, but, like, you didn't really have a choice, did you? If anything, you are our most valuable asset. Yeah, we owe you an awful lot, Zenkichi. <laughs> Thanks. You know, it really was great meeting you all, to be totally honest. I was originally jealous of you, since my line of work means a lot of wasted effort getting things done. Your direct results sort of felt like cheating. It was really bugging me for a while there. Senkichi. But at the end of the day, not only did you guys rescue me, but you literally saved Akane's life. That's what opened my eyes and showed me the things I needed to do. <laughs> the things I'd lost sight of over the years. I guess my heart got changed before I could even see it coming. <laughs> the feeling's mutual. You taught us an awful lot too, you know. Like the challenges you can face when trying to live by your beliefs. As well as the pains of child rearing. <laughs> Good point. But there's a lot of joy to find in those things, too. At this point, I'm finally ready to take care of something that's been plaguing me for a long time. You mean a water? Right. I got no reason to hold back anymore. I know what I have to do. What you have to do? Break a leg, Gramps. Gotcha. But it's not like this is the last time we'll ever see each other. I'm sure we'll cross paths again soon enough. I hope so, too. 
No, I know it. Just do me a favor. Next time we meet, make sure it's not in an interrogation room, okay? But if anything does go down, feel free to reach out. I swear I'll do whatever I can to help. See you, Phantom Thieves. Or, no, you damn kids. There he goes. Zenkichi's great showdown in our world is about to begin. I'm sure he'll be fine. We ought to get going now. Yep, home sweet home awaits, along with a nice big helping of Sojiro's curry. Looks like our journey's finally coming to an end. you thinking? Coming home a day late? You didn't even call to let me know. S -s Sorry, Sojiro. We had to fight this massive god and beat it and save the world from getting brainwashed and then... And... <sighs> Jeez. Well, at least you guys are safe. Welcome back, kids. Oh, and you too. I figured you'd make sure they had a safe trip. Yeah, how was it, by the way? Sojiro, it was amazing! There's so much I gotta tell you! But I'm too wiped out today. I just wanna eat until I pass out into my curry. Sojiro... curry. <laughs> Already got it ready for you. Just give me a sec to heat it up. <sighs> Sojiro, you're the best. Ah, that aroma of coffee and curry? This place really is comforting. Coffee and curry? Does that mean boss is behind the counter? Huh? Haven't I heard that voice somewhere before? Oh, that's right. I never had the chance to introduce myself. Nice to meet you, Sojiro. I'm Sophia, humanity's companion and a member of the Phantom Thieves. your goal with magnificent aplomb. Despite all manner of hardships, your bonds and your fortitude staved off the oppressive darkness, shining brightly for all humanity. You have again broken free from the shackles of fate and grasped your future for yourself. As a result, the god sought by many has returned to the void. Some may be lost without it, with nary a hope to cling on to, be that as it may. I believe the blazing will that you fostered throughout your journey has been embedded deep within the hearts of mankind, and will surely blossom into hope for them when they most need it, allowing them to face their own challenges with strength and grace. Thank you, Trickster. Allow me to praise you in my master's stead. You were truly a remarkable guest. May our paths cross yet again one day. Until then, sweet dreams. Summer's given us a whole lot of grief, but our mission was a success, and we made a bunch of great memories together. So, let's get this celebration going! Woo! Applause! Applause! <sighs> What's wrong, Ryuji? You don't appear to be your usual self. Man, I could not fall asleep last night. Ugh. My bed at home just wasn't doing it for me. I gotcha. Our bodies are all specced for the Feathermobile at this point. 
I find myself missing the Feathermobile too. Why'd you change the name when we don't even got it anymore? Isn't it called the Phantomobile? That was true. At least for a little while. Anyway, it looks like nobody besides us thieves remembers what happened at the Tokyo Radio Tower, just like last time. Ugh, that sucks. Considering it was our asses on the line and all. Patrolling society from the shadows, slaying evil in secret? I admit it sounds rather alluring. Oh well, yeah, but don't you want some kind of recognition every once in a while too? You know, like fangirls and that kind of stuff? Your acting's awful. Still, we made all sorts of unforgettable memories. I couldn't have asked for anything more. Same here. It was a new experience at every turn. It was the best. Mm -hmm. And we can rest easy knowing we did everything we could to help. Any loose strings left are in the middle of being wrapped up. Ah, oh, man. Gramps would have really helped to turn this party up, huh? I bet he'd say he's too busy trying to bring in Owada to attend a celebration just yet. So we're all partying while Zenkichi's still busting his buns on the case? Now I'm feeling a bit guilty. Maybe because you remembered school starting back up soon? And doesn't that go for all of you? Oh, yeah, that reminds me. When are you heading home? Tomorrow. Huh? Really? Time sure did fly by. Good thing this guy's got me after all, huh? Sophia, will you be joining them? You got it. And what if she ends up sniffing out of jail in his hometown, huh? <sighs> like that would ever happen. Now that you mention it, I wonder why Sophia was in the Shibuya jail anyway, of all places. Good point. Well, Ichinose did mention that she used to live in Shibuya. Perhaps Sophia was originally located within her house. So, when Emma picked up on Sophia's existence from the Metaverse side, that cognition... Ah, this is all speculation. And even if that's how any of it worked, it'd have to be some sort of miracle. Since we're on the topic... Sophia, you seemed a bit distracted after we defeated the Demiurge. Did something happen? Oh, that... I heard Emma's voice. Huh? You mean the one only you can hear? Yes. I was issued a final request. Please follow your heart to save humanity. Emma asked you that? Had we been able to reach a mutual agreement, perhaps Emma could have followed Sophia's path rather than face destruction. I believe this is proof of the true power that the Phantom Thieves hold. Artificial intelligence is not the enemy of mankind. We were born to help people, but just like people, we are capable of errors in judgment and can stray from the right path. Our users, their input, our experience, these all mold us to take a wide variety of beliefs. If only Emma had learned and grown with a good companion, then why don't you give yourself the directive to show others how it's done? What? Since you're such a good companion to humanity, you can be a positive role model for how AI and humans can work together. Oh, I couldn't even count how many people that'd end up helping in the end. Thank you, everyone! Oh, but I can't leave this smartphone. That's a shame. Being a role model and helping countless people will have to wait. <laughs> Not so fast, Sophia. I've cooked up an ultra epic. God, shut up, shut up, shut up! This is getting too close to being a downer. This is a celebration, right? Celebrate! Come on, uh, Yusuke, you, me, soda chugging contest, now! Um, I don't know if we're ready for that. Such idiocy. To think you could consume more than I. Hey, you better not spill any of that. You idiots! Oh, you got soda all over my fur! Uh, not exactly the celebration I'd planned. Jeez, 
Thanks for ruining the celebration for me, Ryuji. But it was fun. Everyone seemed to be having a good time. Yeah. I guess I had fun too. So, will the Phantom Thieves be disbanding tomorrow? Uh, we don't have a choice with school and everything starting back up. Ryuji and Lady On already have their plates full with homework as it is. <laughs> Me too. And Yusuke? I'm sure he's ready to get back to his artwork. Makoto and Haru are heading back to college. I wonder what life is like there. They didn't seem too bummed on their deal. Sure, they complain from time to time, but it sounds like they're having fun overall. And Futaba seems to have gotten a lot stronger too, huh? Considering how she seems now, she's not gonna have any trouble at school making new friends. Everyone has found their own path. Well... I was wondering what my path is. You'll find it soon enough, Sophia. Until then, feel free to stick with this guy and me. Thanks, you two. We're really heading out tomorrow. I still wish we had more time, but we ought to get some rest. Well, be careful on your way back. See ya! It was a real blast. Drop us a line whenever you're back. No matter what you're doing, we'll drop it to meet you. We'll be waiting to hear from you. Are you gonna be back for winter break? You know you could come back sooner, right? The attic's all yours whenever you like. It'll only cost you a few hours behind the counter. You take care too, Morgana. Lady On! Well, it pains me to leave you. I must keep watch over him. See you later, Mona-chan! Listen to your owner, okay? No! He listens to me! And I'm not a pet! <laughs> keep an eye on these two for us, okay, Sophia? Okay, I've got it. Oh, I almost forgot! What's the matter? I have a present for Sophia. A present? Indeed! I didn't get a chance to give it to you yesterday. Oh, one moment, Futaba. There's a message from Ichinose. What did Ichinose-san have to say? Sure didn't expect that. Let's meet her. I'm curious. I admit, I'm curious as well. Are any of you two busy to join us? Not at all. In fact, this seems right. Yes. One last little farewell trip together. She said to meet her here, right? Yeah, but I don't see her. Maybe we just meet her here. What do you say we wait for a bit? So hot. Melting. I'm evaporating in five seconds. <sighs> Perhaps we could find a spot to stay and await that isn't directly in the sun. Huh? Wait, look at that! We now bring you breaking news. A shocking turn of events in the political realm. Moments ago, an arrest warrant was issued for legislator June Owada. The charges against Mr. Owada span from bribery and tax evasion to... That's... A fleet of police vehicles have encircled the Diet Member's office building, which is reportedly being searched at this time. We now take you to the investigation team's press conference, live at their headquarters. We have uncovered evidence that shows Mr. Awada illegally accepted funds from the company Medis. Additional investigations into his numerous other charges are currently underway. Regarding the specific hit-and-run incident two years ago, wherein Mr. Owada's secretary claimed to be the culprit, we have learned the true culprit was Mr. Owada himself, driving his own vehicle while under the influence of alcohol. The concealment of this fact involved multiple high-ranking members of the police force, 
all arrested for conspiracy to conceal evidence. I cannot apologize deeply enough for the flagrant, abysmal disregard for truth and justice from this department. We intend to follow our investigations to the absolute end, not only for justice's sake, but for that of the people and their faith in the police. Whoa, is, is this real? Wait, that Owada? And the police were in on it? Isn't this, like, a huge deal? Furthermore, there are claims that Mr. Owada's criminal activity extends well beyond that with Medis, including suspicions that he ordered the murder of his secretary two years ago, as well as... Isn't that... Senkichi-san did it! He finally got the person he's been after for so long! Yeah, Gramps pulled it off! That dude really is badass! The perpetrator's finally caught under the light of truth. A job well done. Looks like he wasn't just trolling us about his skills. No wonder he made such a good part of our team. <sighs> He's finally avenged his wife. Yep. Just like you promised Akane. Not only was the killer caught, he was the one who collared him. I'm so happy for Zenkichi-san. Hey, been waiting long? Ichinose-san! Wrapping up the paperwork at the police station took a lot longer than I'd expected. The police station? I actually went straight there and turned myself in the moment we finished our conversation. Hang on, but what you did was... Kanoe was the one who abused Emma's power. If you turned yourself in over all that... Setting Emma loose upon the world like I did would have led to its destruction if not for you all. I know that's true. Not only that, there's no denying I directly hurt you all as well. I thought I should be punished for that. At the very least. Ichinose! So, I confessed everything to the police. <laughs> Big surprise. They didn't believe anything I said. Well, it's not exactly the easiest story to buy. I even tried to get Hasegawa-san to help with my confession. <laughs> he just laughed it off. The police are too busy for fairy tales right now. That sure sounds like Senkichi. <sighs> anyway, I originally planned to do this once I was released from jail. But I'm thinking of taking a journey of my own. A journey, you say? Yes, a sort of quest to learn about the human heart. <sighs> I thought Emma really would guide humanity to a better world. But once Sophia changed my mind, that was when I noticed something. The eyes of everyone saved by Emma. They just looked cold and dead. But you all, Sophia included, your eyes were so brimming with hope that it opened my own. Sophia learned about the human heart by joining you on your journey. You shared good times and bad. You were there for each other when you needed it. And you learned to understand each other. I don't know if I'll ever be able to do that kind of thing, but I want to speak with other people about the heart when learning this time. Try and really do it right. I just needed to make sure I apologize to Sophia and you all properly before I depart. I truly am so, so sorry for putting you all through so much pain. He's right. It's all been taken care of, and we're not sore over. Thank you. Hey. I have a request of my own. Really? What is it? I... Well, I want to join Ichinose. Huh? You mean go with her on her journey? You've all done so much for me. You accepted me when I had nowhere to go. You said I was your teammate and friend. You gave me a home. It made me so happy. I constantly felt warm and fuzzy inside. However, everyone now has their own path to the future. Thanks to you all, I've learned so much. I've even found my path to follow, the path I need to take as humanity's companion. I want to be able to lend a helping hand to anyone who
who strays from their own path. Just like you all do, I want to help people find their way so they can find their happiness. If Ichinose is trying to find her way, then I should be there for her, just like you were for me. I want to become more like you, so I can be the self that I want to be. Sophia... Does that mean we're saying goodbye to you too now, Sophia? I thought she was stuck in there. Mm -mm. That's not an issue. Sophia, do you remember the first night we met, that full scan of you, in LeBlanc's attic? Well, I've only been able to hammer away at it little by little, but since that day, I've been working on a program to... to get you out of there. <gasps> Dude! For real? I, I tried telling you guys a whole bunch of times, but I didn't think it'd wind up being a goodbye gift. Utaba? Sophia's decided what she wants to do. She's found her path in life. So we should congratulate her and send her off with a smile. Right, Futaba? Yeah, you're right. Are you sure this is what you want, Sophia? They're clearly really going to miss you. Yes, it's what I want. But first, I need to hear it from you. May I go with Ichinose? everyone. I haven't been able to show my appreciation for what you've done for me. Ah, uh, what are you talking about? You know that's not how friends roll. Yeah, friends and members of the Phantom Thieves. Mm-hmm. You'll always be a part of us. Nothing could sever the bond we forged over such high stakes. And we'll never forget the great times we had together. I know you'll be a fantastic companion to Ichinose-san. Sophia? Stay safe out there. Thank you! Well, all things considered, have fun with a fun summer Dad? vacation. Let's keep at it, yeah. Sophia. You know you Stay can call cool, anytime. Sophia. <laughs> You'll always be a friend to us. Yeah. Thank you all. I promise, I won't forget you or our time together. We'll meet again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no matter what. <laughs> okay, no matter what. Goodbye.
Should be out any second. There! Oh. <laughs> it's about time we got going too, huh? I guess so. So we'll go our separate ways. Once more. It's a little sad. The saying goodbye, I mean. Come on! It's never goodbye forever! We'll be back in a flash! Sure will! Yeah. Phantom Thieves! I have been awaiting you, Trickster. You have prevailed through many trials. Unfortunately, I have yet another request. Unbeknownst to me, a certain being calling itself a god has been generating distortions. It has grown to become a threat that is sure to stand in our way. A number of malignant entities have taken up residence within jails. These abominations hold such power that they threaten the safety of even this place, where we currently stand. It pains me to ask such a daunting task of you, so close to your decisive battle. But for the sake of preserving peace across all realms, would you defeat the monarchs of the jails once more? Thank you. I had faith that you would not disappoint. I ask that you depose each monarch as soon as you are physically able, then return here. I shall send you this appeal as an official request.
With that said, please take care out there. What's that?